please tell us a little about your family. Um, my name is Melinda and uh, I'm married to Oz. We uh, have been married for nine years, together for 11. And I have an older son named um, Alex. <laughs> He's 22. And I have Christopher, my son, who is seven, and Gabby that we're talking about today, who is six years old. Can you tell us about Gabby's, uh, about Gabby and about her birth history? Okay. Um, with Gabby, I had a normal pregnancy. There were no complications at all. Uh, normal delivery as well. Uh, on the first day of her birth, we were, uh, she was given a hearing screening as part of a um, routine practice and the nurse told us that um, she did not pass that hearing test but we should not be concerned about that because she probably just had fluid in her ear um, and she would be given a second hearing screening that afternoon. Um, she was and at that um, evaluation she did not pass it as well. So we were asked after two weeks to go to our local health department and have a second hearing screening by them, um, which we did. And at that time, uh, we found out that Gabby had hearing loss um, at that screening. Sometimes men and women deal with things in different ways. Does, does your husband deal with his feelings in a different way from you? I definitely think so. Um, in the beginning, I think Gabby's hearing loss, the impact of that affected me very strongly and more than it affected Oz. Um, I think the enormity of what um, her hearing loss would bring in the future impacted me greatly and it took Oz a little bit more time to really understand what the hearing loss, um, the impact that would have on our family was. We all have dreams for our children before and after they're born. Did your dreams for Gabby change after her birth? Absolutely. Um, I guess when I was pregnant I had plans for our future and things that we would do as a family and when we found out about Gabby's hearing loss um, I had a lot of irrational thoughts but at the time were very very real. Um, for me it was overwhelming um, all of the things that were going on inside my mind and, and we were going through as a family and one day I sat down and just started writing down those feelings and um, I can read that. Yes, please share that with us. Okay. I remember it so clearly, standing in the corner of my darkening bedroom, filling the cool wall with my forehead and fingertips, sliding slowly down and coming to rest solidly on my knees, tears flowing down my cheeks and onto my neck and my shirt my heart aching in pain and disbelief. From the corner of my eye, seeing the shadow of my husband standing behind me, hearing, hearing him ask, please stop crying. Feeling anger as I scream back at him, leave me alone, this is my time. Because I instantly felt that my life was ending and my role as Gabby's advocate was beginning. I imagined all of the things we would never do together. I would never hear her say, Mommy, I love you. She would never hear me sing her a lullaby. She would never be able to play with her big brother. We would never go camping or on family vacations. She would never get married. Thousands of thoughts danced in my mind and on my heart. I saw my dreams of her life flash before my eyes and then die. The pain was so real and relentless, begging, no God, please God, please do not do this to us. Asking, how could this be? Why God? Why her? Why us? I pleaded for God to have mercy on my precious baby Gabby. Feeling the Holy Spirit leave. Spirit gently replied, Melinda, be still and know that I am God. 
How did your friends react to the news about Gabby? I think like us, all of our friends and family were very shocked to find out about Gabby's hearing loss. No one had uh, anticipated this to happen to our family. So everyone was supportive, but a little standoffish, just not knowing what to say or what to do. What have been the hardest times and how did you cope with those moments? Um, I think one of the hardest things for me was just trying to understand what hearing loss really was, what programs were available, what treatments were available, what we should do um, from here. So there was a, a huge learning curve for me as a mom and for us as a family to really understand what was happening. What or who were your biggest support during those times? I think for us, um, Oz was my biggest supporter because we were going through this together as parents for our child. Um, my family here uh, were big supporters of us. My coworkers who uh, stepped in to help at work and allow me the time to be able to go to all of the appointments. Um, coming from a spiritual background, our church, our church family, and then um, programs like Georgia Pines, uh, the interventionists who worked with us were huge, huge in our life. What would you say to other parents about grief based on your experience? I think that everybody goes through um, grief at different times and in different ways. Uh, there are different stages of grief and when you're dealing with um, a child with special needs, I think things like anxiety, fear, even guilt come into play. Um, so knowing that people go through those stages in different ways is very important to understand. Let's go back to describing Gabby. I don't think we explained her um, audiological development and, and the decision process that you had to go through and the um, grief that is comes back and forth during those decision-making process. Well again, um, being very shocked and surprised at the hearing loss, um, we really didn't know what to do so the first people that we worked with um, were audiologists who started educating us about the hearing loss and about um, different options for her. I think for every family you have to make the personal decision about your child and for us we chose for her to receive cochlear implants. Um, she received her first implant at 14 months and the second one at 17 months. And soon after that, her devices were turned on and we started working through um, the process of getting the correct maps or programs for her and um, working with therapists to teach her how to hear, how to listen and how to hear. Um, and working with Georgia Pines to really understand um, how to go through all of these processes. How is your grief different now than in the beginning? Um, my grief is a lot less than it used to be. Um, all of the irrational thoughts that I had are gone. Um, Gabby recently graduated from kindergarten and that was a huge milestone for us. We always wondered if she would start kindergarten at the same time as her peers, and she did, and she did really well. Um, so those irrational thoughts are, are gone now and replaced with hopes and dreams for her future. What tips would you give these new early intervention specialists as they begin to work with families who are just beginning their journey? I think to again remember um, how overwhelmed the parents might be in the diagnosis itself and then all of the um, different appointments and different um, learning 
that the parents have to go through. So understanding that and being patient with the families and being supportive of them during that time um, would be very important. You had a figure that you had shared with us about the appointments and the um, talk to them a little bit about that part of the adjustment mm -hmm. for you. There were so many um, appointments because um, Gabby just being diagnosed and ruling out any other um, related health conditions. Uh, she was born in February and between February and December of that same year she had 92 different appointments. So that was absolutely overwhelming to us and one of the best tips that Maggie um, gave to me was to start a binder system, to get a binder and just start writing down um, all of the different doctors she was seeing, therapists, um, their contact information, date of service, why they were, why she was being seen and to, to keep a good record of that and that came in handy so many times as we dealt with insurance, applied for financial assistance, applied for different programs. Um, we would go doctor to doctor and they would want copies of evaluations and I could open up my binder and, and give them all of the information that was needed. So that binder system really, really helped so much. Okay. Okay. All right. So Oswaldo has just come by to say hi, but we've captured him so that we can <laughs> ask him a couple questions too. And ask him to think back five years, six years ago, the feelings that were in your home, how Melinda was dealing with the diagnosis, and how you were dealing with it and the feelings that you were having. Can you describe any of that? Uh, we, we are sad and, and we don't can believe it, what happened with Gabby. And I try to the doctors doing different things for be sure this is real mm -hmm. because we don't believe nothing. You know, how what happened? Because we had Christopher, Christopher was good. So mm -hmm. how is possible? It's not too many years difference, so I don't can believe that. Mm -hmm. So we want to find out, it's very sad. And uh, so we try to call the doctors and what can do that, what can do much better with Gabby and our family. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when they said they something different coming out, so and then it's play, it's planning all all this stuff, the ear implants, all that kind of stuff. Well, I think we had like a exciting life now because mm. we know right now Gabby is we can hear and she can talk me. We, mm -hmm. we, we knew there was that. hope. Mm -hmm. We knew there was some way that, <coughs> that she would be able to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when the day they put a frost one and they start. They start throwing the machine the first time, or well, I feel like a, I don't know, my heart open again, mm -hmm. more like a more. I can breathe much better. We, we whole life might be more, more easy, mm -hmm. like a more normal person. It's not normal, but right, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. We 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 outside, all that kind of stuff, inside and in, in, inside. Do you feel like you? dealt with the diagnosis differently than Melinda or do you feel that you handled your grief the same way? Well, for me always uh, something happened all the my family always uh, I take inside I don't show nothing mm -hmm. I don't know why <laughs> just I take out inside never not, not showing nobody so I'm sad inside mm -hmm. um, many people say you know, sad. Yeah, I'm sad inside, but I'm not sure. The right. Mess. 
But the and I was the complete opposite. I was <laughs> in the bedroom, like the uh -huh. the description says. I'm in the bathroom crying and uh -huh. in my bedroom crying and you know praying and asking God why, and He was silent. Right. So that's how you dealt with it. Was just being silent. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about? Um, the process that you've gone through is there anything that you wish that the new people because this video is to be seen by people who are training to be parent advocates early intervention specialist is there anything that you would like for them to know so that they can support the parents better especially when the parents are going through their grief I think, so all, they always has hope or something, and, and uh, I don't know, it's, it's I know, we're hitting you, we're hitting you, yeah, take your time, because this is going to be edited, and, and it's just a, a matter of, you know, did you feel, do you feel like there's anything that happened during the process that you're glad that it happened or things that happened that you wish somebody had done differently? Well, always out there, uh, maybe for what not happened with Christopher. And uh, I don't know if this is And then for, for why Gabby, so what, what is the deal with maybe? I, I don't know, just God, then he, he know for why he, he do that. Maybe. I think one thing that was helpful for us was because Oz's native language is Spanish mm -hmm. and my native language is English so when we had support from Georgia Pines there was a translator that was provided for us so even though Oz speaks English and he could communicate with you being able to have a translator there so he could um, communicate in his native language and um, that was great for him. It was good for me because if he didn't understand something in English I was having to translate. Mm -hmm. So that was hard on me, it was hard on him. So we're very grateful that um, Georgia Pines, that Sheila came with you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, worked with us to translate. That was yeah, make it more, 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 more easy our, mm -hmm. our life too. I mean, yes. Make communication. Look at it. And the materials that you gave to us, they were given in English and Spanish, so he could read things in Spanish. I could read it in English, but it was the same materials. That was mm -hmm. very helpful for our family. Yeah, that's true. Did you have any um, concerns or problems with the way things went when she was real little? Mm. Well, the honest, no, because it's like a, when you start teaching a, a kid to start speaking, but you need to be a little by little. So, because he hear you one, if you know, you he, she hear you now, so you well, like be a parent, you know, start teach, teach. Mm -hmm. A normal, like a normal. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, what else? Anything else? Oh, and, and thank you, you guys, you, you, you <laughs> kind and for help, uh, me and Melinda, for understanding all, the, all this process for be how uh, hope uh -huh. for how teacher Gabby, how we communicate. This is some t too many things. Your Japan, they show what to do, uh, how we can be much better. Mm -hmm. Okay, well good. I'm glad that it was a positive experience <laughs> for you. <laughs> okay.